Okay, good morning, everyone. And welcome to our uh, next session of the Liber Arts Arts Club. Um, if you don't know about it, like our mini schedule is public over here, and we have quite a few open slots coming up. Um, so if you have any suggestions of what to talk about, or you want to volunteer to present, let me know, uh, or Nick know, um, and we can get you on the schedule. Now, today I want to um, uh, talk a bit about Blue Sky. So Blue Sky is a, um, a social media app that is open source. It's actually the first time uh, a social media open source app became the number one downloaded app on, uh, on iOS uh, for Apple. Um, it's made by a lot of the people that like made the original Twitter, uh, but um, it has some key differences. It's open source. It's also a public benefit corporation. Um, which you can read more about here on the bottom left corner. Um, that basically means that like um, uh, you know, they're a company that follows like a lot of these um, um, mandates or structures. Um, and there's quite a few other public benefit companies or corporations, sorry, uh, such as like Posit, um, uh, et cetera. Um, so these are like good signs about uh, Blue Sky. Uh, it's built on top of what they call the AT protocol. Uh, and since it's open source, anyone can actually, um, you know, uh, write like an interface for the protocol. So that means like if someone else like wanted to buy Blue Sky, um, they're not really buying anything because like uh, you could have like another interface um, uh, to all of the messages and all of that. Um, so this is like protecting Blue Sky from actually being sold to you know some rich person in the future that wants to change it a lot. Um, so for a few of these reasons, uh, it's become quite popular um, in um, in recent weeks. Um, the uh, like the CEO of Blue Sky is on Blue Sky uh, itself. Uh, is their team is about like uh, a team of uh, around 20 people. Um, and um, there's this like nice little graphic that uh, uh, the CEO of Blue Sky shared, which says like, um, you know, um, it's like an, uh, an open app. It doesn't have any ads. Um, there's uh, no one algorithm. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that. There's a few moderation tools and you own your data. And this idea that it's unviable since it's open source and like anyone could spin up another company. Um, so um, you, will, you want like some numbers over here. There's a few people that have posted some things. Uh, John uh, Byrne Mordock, he works at the Financial Times, um, um, makes a lot of great graphs. You might have seen some of the graphs that um, he and his team made during the pandemic. Um, like they have this uh, very uh, recognizable style. Um, and in any case, here you can see like how like activity has like gone up on Blue Sky. Um, account deactivations on X has also gone up. Um, um, like there's this other chart comparing US versus UK. Um, and like, um, uh, like this is the number of users in, on X and Twitter, how it has declined. Um, you know, in recent weeks uh, or months. Um, I guess this person deleted that post, but that's okay. Um, now, one of the reasons why, um, um, like in particular, the art sets community has been adopting um, uh, Blue Sky is because Jeremy Allen, uh, he made this thing called uh, an art set starter pack. Um, starter packs on Blue Sky are a way of highlighting up to 150 accounts that you recommend other people should follow. Um, if you're a new user, um, I'm just going to open the starter pack. If you're a new user, you can just click over here, like follow all, or you can go one by one and like, you know, click on following. Uh, so here we can see like there's a posit um, and there's a, you know, a few other accounts. So you, it's up to you whether you want to follow all of them or not. Uh, for different reasons. Um, but that's one great way if you're getting started and you don't know, uh, you know, who maybe to follow or who, who might be people that um, post interesting things for you. 
Now, something else that several packs have is this uh, post feature. So you can see like uh, all the recent posts by people in that uh, in that starter pack. Uh, Jeremy included me in the Rstat starter pack, um, and so that's why I've had like um, a lot of new followers um, in the recent weeks. Um, and um, I also made a few starter packs myself. I made one for like genomic scientists training or working in Mexico, as well as uh, what I think a really like um, team lead should do is like make a start pack for people in, in their team, um, such that like anyone else can like um, you know, um, get news from the team directly. Um, doesn't have to be like the, the team head. It's also nice here to see like what is people in team saying here, like um, since we're all like, relatively new to Blue Sky, and I'm quite active on it. A lot of it is me um, right now, but that will change probably in the future. Um, so, um, boom. So now let's talk about feeds. As, um, um, so I haven't made any feeds myself, but um, if I go here to my home, um, you'll see here at the top that this is a basic feed, the following feed. Uh, which shows like all the posts of the people I'm following in um, in chronological order. So like Travis over here just uh, you know uh, recently reposted this message, even though this message itself might have been posted up like actually an hour ago. Uh, <clears throat> now um, that's like the no like technically it's an algorithm because it's just like ordering posts in one specific way. Uh, but it has like, no, it's not an advanced algorithm in, in any shape or form. Now there's a lot more um, feeds out there. Um, and so here, I've, there's a few of them that I'm already uh, using, but there's you know quite a few more. Uh, some of them I've tried, um, um, didn't find as interesting. Um, but let's say, uh, you know, let's say these mutuals feed, you're interested in it, you can click on it. It shows you a preview of how that would look. And so these mutuals uh, algorithm that this user sky feed uh, made um, allows you to see posts from people that you follow and they follow you back. Um, so some people like that. Um, I don't find it that useful for me, but for some people, it, it, they find it useful. If you do find it useful, you can pin it to your home. And at that point, when it's pinned on your home, when you click the home icon, um, you'll see it here at the top. So some of the feeds that I like is like the popular with friends. So this highlights uh, posts that um, are popular among the people that you follow. Uh, only posts, which shows um, just um, uh, posts, original posts from people that you follow. It doesn't show any reposts or things like that. And I don't know why it's not loading right now. Um, maybe syncing. Um, uh, the quiet posters, which highlights posts that you from people you follow that like they don't post that often. Um, and then um, someone actually made the, the R stats um, and uh, feed for R stats. So let's look at what that one is. Um, it was made by Andrew Ice, uh, who is actually part of that um, uh, R stats starter pack mm -hmm. that Jeremy um, Allen made. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Allen. So um, um, this is one way to see like any post that uses the R slash hashtag. Uh, that's basically what this um, what this feed is about. Um, and so for today, right? Um, let's say we're interested in using Blue Sky to find like things that are you know interesting or new in the R sets world. So we could use this R sets uh, feed or, or algorithm. We could go back to the Jeremy Day, uh, sorry, Jeremy Allen, um, our stat starter pack, um, and look at like among the people that uh, Jeremy Allen here highlighted for R, what are some of the recent posts? Um, um, and you'll see that like, actually there's a lot of, um, uh, uh, there's been a bit of like um, some fun going on, I guess where people are like um, uh, discussing whether like uh, tidyverse is better than base R or things like that. Uh, so like here, like uh, Frank Harrell 
it has been like um, really putting a lot of uh, fire into the wood, sorry, a lot of wood into the fire. Uh, and a lot of it started with this post over here that I know has become um, um, uh, like why uh, discussed um, uh, for, for like, um, um, like someone here was like, oh, no, you're a tidyverse person. And like, I just started like this tidyverse versus R thing, this R. Um, uh, even Hadley Wickham himself uh, commented on this. Uh, he like, 20 hours ago, he was like, oh, Blue Sky is really like the new R sets Twitter because we have the first base R versus tidyverse flame war. Um, uh, like, for example, um, uh, you know, this stuff that like, uh, they're like this logic that some people have made, which is like they say that the tidyverse is bad, but ggplot2 is good, therefore, like ggplot2 shouldn't be part of the tidyverse or isn't part of the tidyverse. Uh, whereas actually, if you load the tidyverse package, you're loading ggplot2. So, like, some people don't, don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, in any case, um, like, um, a lot of that is not really of interest to me. Um, the base R versus Tidyverse flame war. But um, some posts from our stats are. Uh, now, uh, as you know, we are also like, um, um, uh, we use Bioconductor quite a bit. Um, so uh, Bioconductor has actually joined Blue Sky um, over here. Um, and uh, one of the people, um, um, uh, um, are part of the Bioconductor bi community, Susan Holmes. Uh, she made um, a starter pack for people in the Bioconductor community. So this one is uh, doesn't have as many people as the one that Jeremy Allen made for um, our sets. But here we can see like what are some of the posts that people in the Bioconductor community have maybe um, uh, like in, in this particular uh, Bioconductor starter pack have um, posted. Um, uh, so someone here is like, hey, like, I'm making this package. Do you think that, like, having a, a message pop up is annoying, yes or no? Um, and, like, Tim Trish is like, no, actually, it's, uh, you know, it's okay to, uh, it's fair to ask people uh, to, like, you know, cite your work. And um, um, so that's, like, a nice message. I'm going to give it a, like, um, a, a nice supportive message. Um, um, and so, like, here's like, oh, someone's highlighting like this new uh, bioconductor workflow uh, for detection and visualization of differential chromatin loops. Um, I actually got an email about this, um, so I was, I, I had already, uh, I was already aware that like this workflow had uh, been published. Um, but like, since I don't really work with uh, chromatin loop data, I like didn't click on it. Uh, it's not of um, appeal to me right now. Um, boom. So um, 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 this is uh, a few ways where you can see like uh, news that you might be interested in. Um, um, so like let's um, um, let's go back to the R stats um, uh, feed over here, um, and let's see uh, if we find uh, some things that we. Um, are interesting in, in diving into a bit more. So um, um, it's here someone is asking, like, you know, we want to combine things, want to use PDF tools. Um, um, here, like, someone like made their, um, um, like, they made an animation for um, a plot. Here, you can see how like the line moves over time. Uh, they looks like they use GPT to actually help them code that. Um, um, mm -hmm. um, I, I, a few days ago, there were a lot of posts about this, about like how to make some maps with some features. Um, and so people were highlighting different R packages for that. Um, 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 here someone is talking about, um, like shiny live apps. Um, uh, workshop story crane. Uh, this person, um, I don't know how to pronounce their name correctly, but uh, we'll give it a try. Daria. 
um, uh, I already know from from before that, like that RIA uh, organizes workshops in support of Ukraine. Um, and so in this particular workshop series, they're going to have um, Tobias Edinbinger uh, talk about um, basics and beyond with applications in R. So it might be interesting in that. Um, um, uh, like someone here is like highlighting their introduction to our book. So I haven't uh, heard of that book before. Let's like open the link a bit and see what it is about. Um, uh, I don't really recognize this, any of the names of the authors. Um, maybe I should. Um, the art for the book looks interesting. You can see that this book is um, like a book down website. Um, has some introduction to graphics with base R. Um, so like here, like some simple scatter plots with like just the plot function. Um, let's see what it has about ggplot2. Um, so let's look at the best best theory over here to see some advanced um, uh, ggplot2 plots that they that they're making. Um, so they're a bit advanced because here we, we can see here like they're using this uh, this theme function of our book, which is probably a theme that they made for their own book, um, um, uh, plus like a few other uh, you know uh, functions from ggplot like gm uh, Instagram AES Labs Scale Field Manual. So that's why like it looks a bit more advanced. Um, and so this could be a book that. Um, um, maybe I could like refer students to um, in the course that I'm teaching um, because it has some of the uh, basic concepts here described. So, for example, it has this chapter about version control with Git and GitHub, um, which uh, might be good, like a good quick intro. Uh, whereas the Happy Git with R, which is a great book, um, um, like has a lot of details, right? <laughs> As like it's a full book with a lot of details about just that single topic. It's a great book, but maybe maybe this could be just a quick like primer for the point students to. Um, oh, so I'm gonna give let's give that a like and a repost. Um, um, hmm. um, here there's another book, Shiny Production with AWS. Um, uh, um, now, this is a bot that from posting updates from CRAN, uh, packages on CRAN. Um, mm, 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 let's see. Posting for the People made this 30 day map challenge. So some people are trying to post something every day for 30 days about maps. Um, and you can see some nice maps on there. Um, 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 uh, more comments about base R versus tidyverse. Um, oh, um, um, Mm -hmm. Lots of tidyverse versus base R. Um, so, I mean, we could keep going here. Um, someone here is highlighting Positron. It's uh, so good for R stats. Uh, I haven't actually tried it, but I do know, I have heard about it. Um, it's like a new... Um, um, a new interactive development environment or IDE for um, um, that is going, I think, to replace the R Studio IDE. Um, still, like in development. Um, so, as far as I knew, like there were still like um, some bugs here or there. Uh, so you, you can see here, like on the actual GitHub repo, you see that it's um, uh, under active development. Might not be a good fit for you just yet. Um, um, but like, I don't know, they, maybe we could um, dive deeper into Polytron and give it a try. Um, cool. So uh, let's go back to Blue Sky. Um, 
that was just the R stats uh, feed that we were looking at. Let's go and uh, in my case, I'm following a lot of people that are R coders. I wanna, but also like uh, genomic scientists and um, and other things. So I'm gonna check my popular with friends feed. Um, here they're talking about Cetero. Um, 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 this person was like, oh, I don't really wanna get into, you know, the R set uh, uh, discussion of um, uh, tidyverse versus base R, but they had written this uh, uh, post over here um, um, discussing, I guess, a few different options. Um, so um, it's a post from May of this year. Um, um, and I guess it ends in a positive note of like, I love the RSS community, let's do cool stuff together. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, um, we can read in more detail that blog post later on, but like for now, let's just um, see that we liked it. Um, oh, uh, post about data. Um, you know, this graph looks really nice, um, made from um, the Washington. Um, um, is that Washington, Washington Street Journal, WSG? Wall Street, Wall Street, um, the Wall Street Journal, sorry. Um, I actually follow a few data journalists. Um, so, um, uh, oh, this one I, I did see someone was making fun of, like, uh, you know, I survived the base R versus tidy versus blue sky wars 2024. Um, um, uh, we already saw this one about the start of messages. Um, so there's, you know, um, a few posts out there that we could look at. Um, um, so um, those are a few options. You could always go and like look at specific people if you want to. Um, so um, like, let's say we want to look at, I don't know what Hadley uh, has said recently. Um, um, so that's, and you, you're always, and you know, that's always an option that you can look at someone's, someone's specific feed and see what is the content that they have curated. Um, um, in the past, uh, Myra Eberick uh, was like a great person to um, check their contact because um, basically her job became, I mean, she did it, I guess, initially out of interest, but then her job at Posit um, was to actually highlight contact that was pretty nice um, out there. Um, um, uh, although I think as far as I know, uh, um, Myra doesn't no longer works at, um, at Posit. So like, oh, um, I didn't know about Rainbow R. Um, 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 so anyway, um, um, you know, Ali, I think overall does a, a pretty good job of creating content. So this is always like a, uh, you could always check um, some things that uh, Hadley has highlighted. Um, um, and that might be like a more efficient use of your time to, to find things. Um, oh, so there's there's a lot of content out there, uh, which is nice to see uh, that um, uh, we weren't seeing um, in recent months or years um, on Twitter because a lot of the people that are now active on Blue Sky have stopped um, being active completely on, on Twitter or X. Um, um, like over time in the past, like two, three years. Um, well, so um, um, there's a lot of content out there. You might find some of it of interest to you. Um, and these are a few ways of how you can do it. Now, um, something I like about the starter packs is because um, let's say I Let's say in the past, I maybe really wanted to know what was happening with like other genomic scientists um, trained or working in Mexico. Um, maybe I would just follow, I would try to limit who I follow, try to mostly follow um, uh, that group of people. Um, but now because of the starter packs, um, when I go to my profile, um, 
I might be following like, in this case, uh, 1500 people. But if I really want to like highlight out of all of the, um, all of the posts, the, the posts from the people working in Mexico, I can just go to the start, to the start pack and like see what the, what they've been up to. Um, so maybe some of their posts are not going to show up on like the popular with friends or things like that. Um, but like, I might still be interested in seeing what, what they're, what they're working on. Um, uh, so that allows to me that compared to Twitter, that allows you to like really follow a lot of people, um, uh, instead of just having a, a very selective pe uh, group of people that you follow, uh, because, uh, if you go back to the start packs, you can really, um, uh, zooming into specific communities that you might be interested in. Um, now, uh, if you're making your account, um, um, something I do recommend is writing uh, some information about yourself on the profile. Um, so uh, people will know like kind of like what you're interested in, et cetera. You can put like links to websites. Um, you can also tag accounts, et cetera. Um, uh, because um, if I go, if I go to like who's um, who recently followed me, like um, here, like a few people started following me in the, in the few minutes that we started this session. Uh, like I don't recognize, um, you know, by the photo or the name, I don't rec really recognize um, this this account. But whereas this other account, I also don't recognize who it is. But they say that they're working on data science and other things. So I'll follow them back. Um, um, I occasionally go back and check this to see like. Um, um, where some people that didn't have any information about themselves, did they add information um, now describing who they, what they're working with? Um, some people might be like, well, I read your information here, but like, I don't really see how this is related to you know, what I'm interested in. And in this case, like our programming or, um, or science, um, you could always like go and click on the profile um, to see like what are the recent posts. Um, um, but like, um, yeah, I highly recommend that you do that right now. We go to the, like the, the people in the team that I've highlighted, like, uh, some of you have information about yourselves. Um, you might have it in, in, uh, in different languages. Um, Blue Sky doesn't have an auto translate feature right now. Um, um, but like, well, at least you describe, um, a little bit about yourself, but some of you don't have anything. Um, so it's really uh, hard for anyone to know what you know what you're interested in, or like if you don't have a profile picture, you don't necessarily have to have a profile picture, but like um, uh, you could you know have an icon if you want to, etc. Um, um, so those are things I would recommend because um, uh, that's that's what like a lot of people are going to see just that brief uh, bio about yourself. They're not actually going to click into your profile and see what are the posts that you have made, right? Um, Cool. Um, so with that, I'll stop the recording and we'll take any questions you have.